Hi, my name is Daniel Tekanoff. I'm a lawyer and self-published author in Fresno County, California, and I am going to present to you the five stages of the Article 5 Convention of the People. Stage one of the Article 5 Convention is the stage we're in right now. You need two-thirds of the state legislatures to vote to begin the Constitutional Convention. That's 34 state legislatures. They must vote for a full-powered Constitutional Convention of the People. This means that they may not attempt to limit the Constitutional Convention as to any particular amendment or topic or even slate of topics. And that is one of the problems we're having right now. We need to get the state legislatures educated and understand what they should be uh, voting for is the full-powered Constitutional Convention. Stage two is the election of delegates by the people. Congress calls the convention and then the convention delegates are elected. Congress's call is a ministerial duty. No power attaches to it. They have no rulemaking power over the convention. Stage three is the actual constitutional convention. The convention will deliberate, do a clause by clause review, and propose necessary amendments. It's important for all of the delegates from all over the nation to come together and to listen to each other. In this way, they educate one another and you get a much better final product. Stage four is when any amendment proposals coming out of the convention are then sent to Congress. This is Congress's only power in the constitutional convention process. They choose whether the method of ratification will be by state legislatures or state ratification conventions. This can be an issue because the state legislatures holding a power to ratify constitutional amendments at the national level is not per the theory of free government. That is actually a compromise of the theory of free government. That power should be held by the people directly in state ratification conventions of delegates elected directly by the people, knowing that who they're electing is going there just for the purpose of const constitutional amendment. And therefore, there's going to be some fear by the state legislatures that if they call a convention, they will ultimately, ultimately lose some power. That is the reason why it's improper for movements like the Convention of the States uh, proposals, because their proposals uh, seek to shield the state, state governments from losing any power in a national constitutional convention, and they don't have the power to shield themselves like that. The people are supposed to have power um, to reduce the power of all government. What I suspect will happen at a constitutional convention is that there will be some transfer of power back from the federal government to the state governments, but at the same time, there will be discussion about limiting both state and federal governments in certain areas. The last stage, stage five, uh, is the ratification process in the states. If 38 states vote to ratify an amendment, it then becomes part of the Constitution. That's three-quarters of the states. It's a very, very high bar and uh, more than a sufficient check and balance. As the nation seeks its first Article 5 Convention of the People, be aware of the American Pyramid of Power. In our system, the state governments form the foundation of the pyramid. The United States government is supreme over them pursuant to the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution. But if the United States uh, Congress will not act to propose amendments, then over and above the entire system is the Constitutional Convention of the People, which the state governments are supposed to call. And so be aware as we go through this process that there will be actors in both the U.S. Congress and the federal government, as well as in all the state governments, who will speak negatively about the Article 5 Constitutional Convention because it will potentially take power away from them. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that people who do well in the system, the wealthier people will probably be objecting and probably even spending money, again, speaking negatively, simply to try to get people to think negatively about going to the Constitutional Convention. I would say that those people really need a better education because once you learn of a structural defect in the U.S. Constitution, it exacerbates much quicker. There are mischief makers in the system. Once they know that there are defects in the system, they exploit them. And the wealthy are taking the risk that all of the wealth that they have built up over the entire course of their lifetime, the value of that wealth will come tumbling down very quickly if the system is subject to continual unrest. And so, therefore, it's very important for those of us who have taken an oath to support and defend the U.S. Constitution to step up and call for the Constitutional Convention once structural defects are uncovered through time and experience. If you are supportive of the calling of the first Article 5 Convention of the People, or if you would just like to learn more, please take a look at my book at Amazon.com. You will find there a free sample of Chapter 1, The Two Deep Structural Defects in the United States Constitution. The book pulls together the entire history from the Constitutional Convention itself relating to the preparation of the Article 5 Amendment Clause. So just the labor to put all that together in one place will save you time.